If you ever thought about getting a successful mentor or coach and you actually want me, Spectacular Smith, to actually coach you and become your mentor, I'm actually so excited about releasing my online school, Spectacular Academy, where I'm actually going to teach you live once a month different skill sets that's actually going to help you change your life for the better transformational information that I'm going to give you guys access to. I have a formula to success that every single company that I ever touched turned into gold. And I have over 14 companies. Okay. And all of them have the same type of success. So I want to teach you everything that the school system should have taught you. You know, everything that I know and how I built these fast growing companies and these award winning companies and show you real curriculums that I'm going to break down. You're going to have access to me. I'm going to be live in the chat rooms. I'm going to be live in the Facebook groups and personal communities that I'm going to give you guys access to of like minded entrepreneurs. So you're not by yourself on this mission. Not only you have me as a coach and a mentor, but you actually have your peer to peer people that's going to push you and root for you on the way to the top. Guys that's on the same exact weight limp that you are on and want the same exact results because my game plan is to change the way the school systems teach and teach you the things that need to make an impact in your life. Things that's going to be a high ticket skill that you can use forever where you don't never have to worry about going broke or not eating at night because once you learn how to market and brand yourself then you can eat for a lifetime you get access to my team and everything if you want to go to my free training just to get a sample of the things that's going to be in my program you can actually go to specmentorme.com or i'm gonna put it in the bio only take a certain amount of people every single month so reserve your seat and do not procrastinate because you might just miss out. Now let's get to the podcast. What's up, everybody? This is Spectacular Smith and welcome to the Spectacular Experience. Well, welcome, Spectacular to the Highest Self Podcast. It's so good to have you here. Thank you for having me. I Uh, appreciate it. Yes. So the first question I would love to ask you is, what makes you your highest self? What makes me my highest self? Define highest self. The best version of you. I just think learning, you know, constantly learning, helping others. You know, it's all about really helping as many people as possible for me because I know so many people lost in the world and they have all the potential in the world, but they just need somebody else to point it out to them. So I feel like that makes me my highest self when I'm constantly actually learning and helping others. Mm, I love that. And you've definitely been doing that. So for a lot of people listening, they're huge Pretty Ricky fans. Like I just grew up listening to your music. So Mm. can you tell us just the story of how Pretty Ricky came to be? Whew. Yeah, so we pretty much started off like it was it was two of my brothers was rapping at the time and they was already in like a rap group and everything. I used to be in like a dance group in like the third grade. I, I used to always be an entertainer and they was already rapping and they used to do shows and stuff from them having like little songs or whatever. And they used to do like talent shows and go perform and stuff. And one day my dad was like, Speck, you need to get in a group. Right. If you guys have been watching Love and Hip Hop, you know how he is. Right. And it was like, Spick, you need to get in a group. You're dancing on the stage with everybody else. You need to dance on stage with the brother. So I first started just dancing on stage. I was just, I ain't have <laughs> no just, verse, no nothing. I'm just up down. there. I'm just up there dancing and having fun. And one day the producer, his name is Jim Johnson. He said, how about you guys give Speck a verse? Like give him a verse on the song. And they gave me a verse on the song. And we ended up performing that one verse on that one song. So they had this whole 15 minute show and only had like a 30 second little verse. And when I did my verse, all the girls went crazy. They was screaming. It was grabbing me. They was like, you know what? <laughs> Put Speck on all the songs. <laughs> so they ended up putting me on all the songs and I had to learn how to rap. I didn't know how to rap at all. So I taught, I self-taught myself how to rap. It was all self, uh, 
self-taught. And from that point forward, I kind of like ended up in a, in the forefront of the group. So, yeah. And then you just learned how to sing along the way too. Yeah. So <laughs> it, I really, so listen, so the whole singing thing, I'm not even, I'm not even that talented, man. People be thinking I'm talented. I just You're really like. You're like the lead singer, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, Yeah. Just God so actually gifts. the pleasure is the voice of the group. So, mm, but, mm-hmm. but I feel like your voice was like one of the main voices that people would, I feel like baby blue is more the, the rapper, right? Mm-hmm. So like, so the group is three rappers and one singer. So pleasure is the singer. Oh, okay. Everybody thinks I sing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. cause it's like, you're always just in front. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Ever since that, like the first verse I ever gotten, I performed it. I like kind of. Like the fans like really push start pushing me into the front, you know, of the group, and like I became like one of the favorites of the group. So I I don't know, man. It's just like it just happened. Yeah, it just happened, man. I just went with the flow. It was just always my passion to just perform. You know, that's that's what it's about to me. Mm, I love that. So Pretty Ricky had tons of Billboard hits, yes. and you traveled all over, and really were such a big part of the culture. And then what happened? Yeah, I mean, we did a lot, right? We sold 11 million albums. Like you said, we had like a number one album for five consecutive weeks on the Billboard charts. They didn't know whether we was R&B or hip hop. Mm-hmm. So they just put us on the chart for both of them. And we was number one on both of the charts wow. at the same time for both genres. So it was it was amazing. And yeah, I started doing this whole rap thing and we kind of took it by storm. You know, the music, everybody really gravitated to it, the ground on me's, the hotlines, the your bodies, and all of them went platinum and we had two platinum albums and and after that, like being on the road, I just started doing my social media thing. I got a call one day from one of my guys named Matty J and he was getting a little referral fee. It was a company called My Likes at the time. Mm -hmm. And they had a little referral program and everybody who you brought on, they got like, you know, different, you know, a hundred bucks here or you get a chance to win an iPad or something like that. And yeah, so he basically introduced me to this platform and on the platform they had like little leaderboards on the people who make the most money. You can see who was making the most money. So I always had the drive to like, I want to be number one. Like I don't want to ever be last place. I don't even want to be top 10. Like I want to be number one, at least top three. So I started figuring out creative ways to grow a following, to make money on this website. And the way you made money was traffic acquisition. So when you post a link, they call them like clickbait articles. Mm-hmm. And off the actual articles, you will make money off of everybody who click on it. Mm-hmm. So I started building like massive fan bases on social media. So all these different parody accounts. I'm one, I'm like literally the godfather of parody accounts, right? Because it didn't even exist when I started it. Mm. And I started creating all these fan accounts, speaking in their voice, you know, and, and really having fun with it. And celebrities really never have fun on social media They're always like serious you know if you're like a comedian you're never telling jokes all day and that's what my pages did it told jokes mm-hmm. and you know if it was a comedian if it was somebody who was like an R&B singer I did like love quotes and I really connected with the crowd versus to the regular celebrity page I had you know the Cat Williams the Will Ferrells the Kevin Hart's the Jay-Z Beyonce's like either they didn't have a social media or they wasn't really entertaining all day every day so it was sometimes they would tell the actual celebrity hey you need to be like this page and it was my parody account that they was talking about mm, I love that so you kind of just figured out okay a good way for me to make money is to just build all these pages and grow their following and I'm going to do it with humor right now tell us about the moment that Pretty Ricky broke up took a pause, you guys Mm -hmm. were having internal issues and you found yourself on your girlfriend's couch. Right. So through that process, like we kind of went through our breakup, you know, it was about money issues and, and really the person that was handling the, the money, which is my father, he didn't really have the right structure in place and he didn't really take the money and really do right with the money for everybody to be happy. Right. So if you're a platinum group and you're making all this money, you know, $50,000 a show, $60,000 a show, but you're broke, like, because somebody else is handling all the money. And my father, like, he had the best cars, you know, before they came out, you know, SL 500 bins before, a year before it came out, two-story house. So we feeling like, you know, this is the right person with the money. But the fact that the reality, he was just a good hustler, he was a good street dude, but when it came to real business, 
he didn't really know how to conduct himself in a, in a great manner to really execute on either the vision or taking, I mean, in the vi- on the vision or taking what he had to multiply. He didn't really understand that. All he knew was hustling and music. But everybody who's super successful right now is not 100% music. If you look at Diddy, Jay-Z, 50 Cent, like all these guys who's pretty much moguls, like nobody really made a fortune on music compared to their products or other ventures that they actually have. Mm, so true. And and we're seeing that so much with vitamin water and all these incredible, right, huge right. projects. Yeah. So you found yourself broke at this point, even right. though you were a super big success right. and figuring out that the way to build yourself up is through social media. Did you ever feel like this is it? Like I had my heyday, it's over. Did that thought ever come across your mind? Yeah, I never like... I never think about that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's something wrong with me. I don't know. Like, I never think about my failures or my situation. Like, it's always positive with me. It's always being optimistic at all times. Like, I, I don't, it, it don't just something you were me. born with. I don't, I don't know. I don't, is that something you can be born with? Yeah, I think, I mean, look at even other members of your group. Did everyone turn it around and turn it into the best, the best opportunity possible? I mean, to some, I mean, I don't know. I can't really speak for them. You mm-hmm. know, I, I really don't know what they have going on on the day to day. But I know for me, for me, I just really never cared about, you know, the situation. Like, I know for sure, like, if we really wanted to take things to the next level, then we can. And then if we really want to take everything to the next level, we can. So it's really no issue. Mm-hmm. For me, but honestly, I mean, honestly, I just, I don't know. I just never really cared about it to let, to like make me say, hey, I got to focus on social media. It was always, this is my music. This is some business stuff that I got going on, Mm -hmm. right? I would do both for free. I would go and perform on stage for free. I really didn't like, I really don't like making music that much, Mm -hmm. right? It's still something I enjoyed the process with my brothers creating it, but just going in and go writing a verse and all. Like I I said, I taught myself how to rap. It wasn't like I loved to rap. Like I was really forced to rap and get in the group. I really got strong Mm armed in the first place. But I really, my passion is performing. Mm -hmm. And then my passion is social media. Like I love seeing people, pages grow from zero followers to millions of followers like some of my clients, right? And I take them from zero and I grew them to 100,000. And I grew them to a million followers and they don't even know nothing about social media. And I teach them about social media and, you know, I give them the right tools to grow it, you know, the right team in place. And I give them a team. So you don't have to go out and go hire all these social media people. I'm giving that to you, right? And just to see their story get out to the world, their product out to the world and really change lives with it, it really makes me feel good as a person. So it's it's really based on what I love to do versus like I'm going through this issue and I mean, I'm doomed or like Pretty Ricky is over. Like I never really even cared. You're just following what was exciting for you. Yeah, it was just it was just fun for me. Even the hard times, like I didn't even like, I didn't even care that I didn't have no money because I knew how to make money. Like if I ever wanted to go make money, like my father taught me how to make money. Mm-hmm. So like I was hustling since third grade. I was selling. I sold like ten thousand dollars worth of little chocolate bars. Wow. You know, in the, in the third grade. So I knew how to make money. So it never bothered me. Mm, I love that. So let's talk about Grumpy Cat. Okay. Because I think everyone is familiar with Grumpy Cat. How did mm-hmm. you get involved and how did you grow it into now a brand that is worth over a hundred million dollars? Mm-hmm. So Grumpy Cat was, I was looking for a new idea and I did all these celebrities and everything like that. And I was on YouTube, you know, how you go down a rabbit hole, you, you go on, on YouTube to figure out how to you know, why your camera battery is going dead so fast and you end up learning how to make ice cream. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. so, so exactly. So I ended up running across the cat, right? I seen a video of the cat. And I was like, whoa, like this cat is like, this cat is amazing, right? This cat looks so grumpy, right? Mm-hmm. And then I seen a picture of the cat and I was like, okay, let me turn this into a meme. So did the cat have a following yet? No, no following. It was just a video that I seen of the cat right oh, before. Because really? once I started with the cat mm-hmm. and the picture started going viral, then everything started going to YouTube. The Everything just started catching on fire. So the Twitter page that I created was the driving force of it because I was constantly dropping content So you made on the it. Grumpy Cat Twitter? 
Not correct. their owner. Okay. No, they didn't make any. No, they followed me. Oh, wow. They followed me. It's like, okay, this guy is blowing it up. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, what's going on? Oh, is this? Okay, well, let me do this. Let me go create. Like, now they're realizing that this is this is real. So, technically, Grumpy Cat is yours and not the well, owner's? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. smart enough back then to, like, start copywriting things. Mm. And, like, because I was just, it, like I said, it was a passion. And, and I was making my money on the back end, mm-hmm. you know, but at the same time, like, they took advantage because it was their cat, right? right? I didn't own the cat. Yeah, I just seen the cat you find and knew it was brandable, cat. Yeah. right? And, <laughs> and it's like finding talents. Like I see that talent. It's like I put all this cosign and all this person ne- next to pop. But if if this is this person artist, mm-hmm. then they get all the benefit off of it yeah. and not me, right? I just found didn't say, hey, this. This dude is dope, a dope artist. And then by me saying it and helping him with his music, all of a sudden he blows up. But then the record label who has him signed Mm -hmm. is the one who gets all the benefit. So you saw this cat, you start making memes. Is Grumpy Cat the like, I can has cheeseburger. Is that from Grumpy Cat or is that another cat? It was so many people start making memes. Mm -hmm. Once I started, it was just like it caught on fire. But then like the first several days, it was one of the most viral memes on the Internet. It caught on fire pretty quickly. Wow. And then yeah. how did you get it to start being something that could create like income? Because I started growing the account. Once I started using the distribution channel for the rest of my pages, because at this point I already had bigger pages already. Mm-hmm. So once I started a grumpy cat, I used the other pages as a distribution channel mm-hmm. and it already was going out to millions of fans. Mm-hmm. And then by being such a viral, viral content and theme, it just took off. And then everybody started generating memes for it and things like that. Mm, got it. So you started to use Grumpy Cat's following to shout out your other pages. I not. was using the other pages to shout out Grumpy, Grumpy Cat. Cat. Oh, okay. And then Grumpy Cat caught on fire mm. and started leading the whole movement for all the rest of my pages. Right. Yeah. And then you got brands involved. Right. So you get the brands involved and then like everybody wants to, you know, put it in Macy's and Walmart and then they realize how much of a of a commodity this this cat was, so they decided to do the deal. Yeah, you know? I saw Skechers mm-hmm. was just like grumpy cat little Skechers things, and I'm like, it's hilarious because cats can't wear sneakers, but mm-hmm. that's where mm-hmm. Skechers wants to put their ad money. Yeah, yeah. So the cat the cat really took off, you know. But like I said, I didn't really understand business back then, so the owners, you know, really reaped the benefits off of everything. Mm. So what other like major parody accounts have you worked with and as well as your clients? Man, I work with so many. I was running like 25 parody accounts at one time. So what a lot of people don't know, because I I never told this part of the story is I got my pages all the way up to six million followers and then Twitter deleted all of them. Why? Because they said it was impersonation. Uh, Of an animal? No. Or of the celebrity? All all the celebrities. Mm. Right. That's so frustrating. Like I said, I don't like I learned from that. It's like, all right, what can I do better? Yeah. Right. So that's why I'm able to do it for clients. Now, mm. I started off with parody accounts. Then I ended up, you know, helping other parody accounts monetize their parody accounts. I'm like, listen, you don't have enough time to do this. Give me a percentage. I'm going to run it for you. You already have the following. I know what I'm doing. You can see me on the leaderboard. I was always number one. So tell us about this blueprint that you have that's pretty mm-hmm. much able to take any account and build it up. Right. I mean, it's really about algorithms. It's about, you know, analyzing your competition, seeing what's viral, you know, what's making it go viral. We build some type of IP so you can actually run it through some type of filters, have some type of triggers to know what's viral, what's not viral, and curate this content. So we're able to either recreate it with our team and have certain strategies. Because over the years, I came up with like 15 strategies you know, probably 16, 15, 16 strategies that work depending on who you are as a person in your brand. And I'll figure out which one works the best for you. You might think just because you're in real estate, the guy that I may go viral on real estate be your perfect formula. But in reality, it was the guy who was a public speaker that formula worked for you. So I have to figure out what formula works, right? It starts off a little slow. And then the second month, it start picking up and the third month, you're on fire. Mm. So now have you created a different strategy for Instagram? Yeah, all platforms are are a different approach. Mm -hmm. It's the same method in theory, Mm -hmm. but 
it's a different approach, right? Because mm-hmm. algorithm change, Facebook is more viral than any platform. So they have the auto plays on the videos. You have Twitter. Twitter is more like noisy. You can, it's a lot of high traffic. Then Instagram is more of algorithm changes and engagement groups and, you know, different things to offset the algorithms. Okay, real talk, the product I'm about to tell you about is literally the best thing I've ever put into my mouth. And that is saying a lot. And this is Organifi's Gold. So essentially it is the hot chocolate of your dreams with none of the sugar and all of the turmeric and reishi with a touch of ginger as well. It is delicious on its own, just with water. When I was on my Pancha Karma and I couldn't have any sugar or chocolate, anything like that, I brought my Organifi Gold with me. Pancha Karma approved and all I needed was hot water and it was the perfect, just sweet, soothing, desserty taste that I so deeply crave after meals. And it makes me feel so calm, so restorative. It is my optimal nighttime tonic. And literally I've gotten all my friends on it and I'm pinching myself that they are my podcast sponsors because even if they weren't, I would still be telling everyone about it. So head over to Organifi.com and use coupon code Sahara for 20% off. That is Organifi, O-R-G-A. A-N-I-F-I dot com. Use coupon code Sahara for 20% off your gold. Sometimes you're on the go and you don't have time to make your Ayurvedic six taste bowl. And that is when a really good bar comes in. I've been on the hunt for so long for a bar that hits my requirements and that's organic, vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO, clean, no weird shit in it, you know? And it's really hard out there, but I'm super stoked that I found Go Macro and I recently went to Burning Man and I brought Go Macro with me and oh my God, what a lifesaver it was. So I love that it has sustainably grown ingredients and really cool ones like their almond butter carob bar, which is delicious. Delicious. They have a really good granola and coconut bar. Even my husband loves them and he's very taste conscious. So I'm obsessed. Now you can get your own by heading over to gomacro.com and using coupon code Sahara for 30% off and free shipping. That's gomacro.com with coupon code Sahara for 30% off. So a lot of people listening, they aren't famous. They're not Sean Kingston and J. Cole. So they're not sure, should I be putting pictures of myself on my social media or are people not going to want to follow me because they don't know who I am? Well, everybody who started, nobody knew who they was when they first started. Mm -hmm. So you got to think of it like that. Like they did something to become famous and known. So we was talking earlier about the dogs and like viral little puppies and all that stuff. He's going to make Chubby go viral, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So like everybody's the same. Like people's, most people look the same. You might have this guy, everybody have a twin in this world, right? Mm -hmm. So even an influencer that's super viral right now, they have a twin in this world somewhere, but that person wasn't viral, right? So you have to figure out what makes you different, what makes you stand out and utilize that. Figure out a system or strategy, see what's working for everybody else Mm -hmm. and see how you can add that to your situation, right? You might take a piece from this person, piece from this person, a piece from this person. Now you put all of it together and now it's your piece, Mm -hmm. right? It's, It's like a masterpiece and you take all these components and now all of a sudden you have this Picasso painting that's worth all this money because people value it now, right? And they want to come and see what you have going on every single day because you're entertaining. Either you're entertaining or you're touching them emotionally. Like it's it's these different things that connect with someone that'll make them want to follow you, right? So you might have people that like your pictures Mm -hmm. because you look amazing, right? Or you might have somebody because like your videos because you look amazing on video, Then you have people who like the words you say, your quotes. So when you mix all that stuff up together, you have your little your little algorithm that you created for your page, right? And then once you realize, like, damn, they like video more. So it's up to you to do more video now, right? You might see you post a picture with your baby, and then you post a picture of some shoes, and you post a picture of just a selfie. And each one of those have their own little wave. You're like, holy crap, every time I post a picture that's a selfie my engagement is times three. Mm -hmm. So you got to feed the people what they want. Now you have to be creative, not the same stale selfie. You got to give them different type of selfies, but you know to feed them selfies. Mm, I love that. Yeah, look at how people are responding. Exactly. So, well, you're saying how different people want different things. So maybe someone loves your videos and someone loves your quotes. 
So I guess where people get confused is then should I just be going after that thing that they want or maybe that thing that they don't really want so much, just keep feeding it in there to build that audience? Well, you want to go with what people want. You don't want to force it. Like I have friends, for example, that they post like quotes and pictures of themselves, but their quotes do way better. They're like, so should I just stop posting pictures of myself? Mm -hmm. You would yeah, say, so, yeah. So yeah, so with that situation, it all depends on your ending goal too. So if the ending goal is you don't want a baby page, right? Every time you post your baby, it goes viral, but you don't want every picture to be about your baby, right? right. So you have to understand what's your ending goal. Is your ending goal like who's your consumer? Are you doing this for consumers? You want customers or are you doing it for popularity? Mm -hmm. And that way you know how to go, what, where to go, right? I know some guys that do post a lot of quotes, mm -hmm. right? Every other picture is a quote mm -hmm. and it keeps their page growing and engagement going. But if that's not what you want to be perceived as, then you got to figure out what makes you comfortable that everybody else like, mm -hmm. right? Because just because everybody like you doing negative stuff don't mean that that fits your brand. You want to just be yeah. negative all the time. That does so well on social media. Right, but you have to figure out what's it's, the balance for yeah. you because ultimately you're doing this to make yourself happy too. Exactly. You don't want to do things just for attention and for money. It, that don't last long. It don't, don't make you happy. That's why you see people with all these money, you know, end up committing suicide because mm -hmm. they're not happening. I mean, they not, they're not happy inside and mm -hmm. personally. And when you're not fulfilled inside, spiritually, emotionally is like pointless. What are you doing it for? For sure. Yeah, I've definitely seen a trend of, you know, authenticity on social media, but it's almost gone to this like competition of like who can share like their deepest, darkest secrets more. Right. I had the worst day and, or it's a picture of them and they're like husbands, like we look happy in this picture, but we actually got into the worst fight of our life before this picture. And it's like, people are almost you know, getting joy off of other people's misery because it's making them feel better. But it's almost like, why are we bonding over this? Yeah. Yeah. I think that people really like to connect because everybody goes through a lot of stuff. Right. And just to see somebody you can connect with, it means a lot to people. So I think people really thrive for that attention sometimes. And people really want to see that so they can pour their heart out on that situation. Yeah. Like I was just on Love and Hip Hop and I was crying and stuff with my dad, but so many people probably going through the same situation and I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing paragraphs of comments. What that tells me is, that tells me that people who see me on TV and see me crying in that situation with my father and being vulnerable at the time, they can relate to it. So they're like, yo, like, I didn't even have the balls to even cry. I would have walked away or like the way you handled it or whatever. And they want to, and they relate to it. So they're pouring their heart out in the comments, taking up for me. But in reality, they're really taking up for themselves and, and saying the things that they would want to say to their father or their mother in, in the same situation. Mm, and that's such a beautiful way to use your, your social media following to talk about things that most people are yeah. afraid to talk yeah. about. Yeah, I think connecting with your audience is everything. Except, like Back in the day, you used to get away with that. Now people really care about what you have going on, who you're supporting. That's why you see a lot of these CEOs are on social media. These guys were billions, but they understand the power of social media and what that can do for their company. So the Jeff Bezos and the Elon Musk and the Zuckerberg, like, you know, Zuckerberg, I mean, Elon Musk is on Twitter, Facebook, like he's everywhere, you know, Zuckerberg is everywhere, like, and he don't even own some of the platforms he's on, but I just show you how important it is to have the social media and how people connect with your family and, and the things that you're doing on a day to day. Mm. So how important do you think it is for social media to have like an overall theme? I think it's super important. Like my team, we like to create a formula. So are we going to post a picture first, a quote second, a picture, just that person, a selfie, a video, a viral video or something else? I and mean, we figure out what that formula and is. And do you use like, like a rule of six? I've heard people like repeat every six times. Have you heard of this? That's dope. I didn't, you just taught me something that I, I never thought about the that. the eye moves like that. Yeah, it's like a spiral. It actually makes sense to do that though. Mm -hmm. Now that you say that, it makes sense because the feed blocks out three and three. So it recycles the actual formula. Yeah. So yeah, that's good. I like that. I just taught you something then. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. I learn something every day. I try to learn as much as possible. Remember, that's my higher self when I'm learning. It is, it is. Yeah. And so tell us about, were you just studying at Harvard? Yes, yes. Can you tell us about that? All right, so I decided to enroll in Harvard and that was because I wanted to know what they was teaching that I didn't know, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, yeah. right? So I... Started my company. I knew nothing about business. I was just a, 
musician and being a musician, you don't have to do nothing but be talented, right? And if you have the right talent, you can go viral, make money. But with business, it's so many moving parts. You have sales, you have leadership, right? You have the best product in the world, but if you are not a lead your team, everybody's going to quit on you or you just this asshole or whatever, whatever it is on how you lead your team, right? Then you have marketing, you have operations, you have all these things that makes a company successful. And I didn't know none of this stuff. So as my company took off and it's just making all this money and I became one of the fastest growing companies in America, I didn't want to like fail. Like when it comes to not only myself, because I, I take my L's like with happiness, right? It's like, all right, cool. I learned from that. And I, I just figured out that. But I have a team. They have families. They family are dependent on them for certain things. So it's like, I can't let down all these people. So I'm like, I got to learn as fast as possible. So I start going to these seminars, taking programs and freaking reading over a hundred books. I didn't start reading books until three years. When I started my companies, when I started reading books, yeah. I was the idiot. See, I don't read no damn books like an idiot. Like I just feel stupid. I even used to say that. But that's when everything started getting unlocked. When I start reading books and really start mastering education in the hood and projects, whatever you want to call it, and figuring out how to make money from that. So I understood that element. Then I got into the books, understood books, right? I got book smarts. So the only thing I hated was school. I cheated my whole way through high school because I was bored and I felt like school wasn't teaching me nothing. Like school don't teach you nothing that you can utilize in the real world. Like, why are you teaching me geometry, bro? Why are you teaching me trigonometry? Why are you teaching me? Uh, we can deal with that later, right? Teach me how to do my taxes. Teach me how to, you know, save money on tax. Teach me about Roth IRA. Like, I, I like teach me about profit sharing plan. Teach me about how to invest my money. You know, how to manage my money. Like, that's what I need to know. So. By enrolling in the Harvard, I felt like, all right, I figured out all this other stuff. So let me see what Harvard could teach me now. Because I have all these different components. The last thing I'm missing is school, right? Because I felt like high school failed me. Let me see what this is now that I'm ready. And I felt like the way Harvard teaches with case studies, it's like the perfect type of learning. So what I realized when I went to Harvard is that the way they teach is good. It's a good teaching. But I feel that it's still not enough where people can really utilize it in their business. So I started my own academy online called Adwizar Academy. And basically it teaches you everything you need to know as an entrepreneur starting a business or even having a successful business on every last thing that I had a huge hurdles that I lost millions of dollars in figuring out lessons and learning from them. I'm putting them all in the program so you can learn how to do sales, selling through personality, how to save money on taxes. One strategy in my program, I save over 70 grand on taxes off of one little strategy that I'm teaching in my program, which is like amazing when it comes to doing taxes. You're making all this money, but you're giving it all to Uncle Sam, right? So it's doing it legal, but smart, you know, with the top 5% in the world do every single year, right? And we're teaching you how to do marketing on Instagram, on Facebook. These are all things that you need to know to market yourself as a business, how to build your personal brand on Facebook, on LinkedIn, then on Twitter, on YouTube and become an influence in your niche. So now you're more elite over any competition. So pretty much I teach you everything that I went through CRM systems. Nobody teach you about that in school. I just figured out what a CRM system was like two years ago mm -hmm. and I'll break it everything down on Asana, breaking down tasks and operations on how to have accountability for your team, you know, how to make them feel ownership in their own department. You know, I'd say all my team and my company, your CEO, of your department, you make your decisions. This is you. You stay, if you got to stay late or you got to work on weekends, this is the only way that you're going to get the results you want. You know, anything that's easy ain't really the good for you. Everything that's hard and challenging is worth the end of the result. So it's just stuff like that. And I put it all in the program. So everything I learned throughout my journey, I put in one program and anything that I was good at, but somebody else was a beast that amazing, I had them teach it. So if I'm good in sales, but this person made $10 million just off of sales, I asked them to teach in my programs as a million millionaire teacher. So Harvard, they have professors. My program, I have all millionaire teachers. 
So these are guys who's actually making millions right now to this day and things that's working right now. They're teaching you the secrets because I told them my vision was to fix the school system. Everybody complains about it, but nobody does nothing about it. So I came up with my own program. And now instead of having professors, I'm having real millionaires teach you their secret on how they do what they do on a daily basis. Oh, so good. And is this school open? How do we sign up? I'm yeah. signing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's called Awazar Academy. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you go to my link in my bio, you know, you can just sign up for my live training. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. his Instagram is I am spectacular. Yep, and I, I am have, spectacular. I'll have it in the show notes. Yep. Yep. So I'm just trying to teach. I'm trying to, my goal is this year, my whole campaign is I want to create at least a hundred millionaires. I'm signing up. Yeah. I will be your first. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. And my goal is for women. You know, I really, I feel like women don't have, I feel like women don't get the, the opportunities that they deserve. Like my office, all my leadership team and my, and for my company is a hundred percent women. It's not one male on my leadership team. And I feel like women deserve more, you know, and I feel like I can help them gain the confidence understanding what's possible because a lot of time is limited beliefs on what's possible because they feel like, you know, they overshadowed or by men or they feel like they can't get in a powerful position or, you know, they come to a, a, a situation to work for somebody, but really they can be a partner. They can be a boss. So just it's going to happen. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so necessary because these are all things like a lot of the things that I've taught myself that you were like, where'd you learn this? I'm like, I don't know. I just, you just figure it out. But yeah. imagine how much time you would have saved to someone who had just like told you. Absolutely. And that's what I say to my students. I say, listen, you want to figure this out for 10 years and lose it over millions of dollars like I did, or I can just give you literally a sheet of paper and say, you do one, you do two, you do three, you do four, you do five, you do six, you do seven, eight, nine, ten, and you're going to get this result. Cha-ching. And that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I I definitely think. And I think a lot of us, we think that it has to be hard. It has to be this like huge struggle and it doesn't. You know, there's people who've walked the path who can make it easier for us. Yes. Everybody leave breadcrumbs to success. You don't have to do, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. My team used to ask me, they don't ask me this no more, but they used to come up to me and ask me, it's like, hey, Spec, what should we do? This guy's doing this, this company is doing this. And they'll come to me and I look at them and they'll look back at me and they say, all right, if it works for them, it'll work for us. <laughs> you know, and they walk off because it's like they already figured it all out. They already done went through the bumps and bruises. So why I got to come and try to remix what they got going on? It's working already, mm-hmm. right? So I can go and do what they're doing, put a little twist, but I don't twist much. Mm-hmm. I put a little sprinkle on mm-hmm. it. Yeah, it's it's such good advice. And I think a lot of us, we are like, well, I can't. That's copying. And it's not copying. It's more taking a strategy, but with your content and your right, and right. your personality Putting to your, it. Putting a tad spin on it, right? Yeah. You're keeping the same formula. And what I like to do is go and figure out what everybody's doing, right, in my niche. I go take all the best stuff that I really like. Oh, I really liked it that. I really liked it that. I really liked it that. Make my own situation, then add my little spin on top of it. And now I have a proven system, right, and a proven formula, and then I add my one-two on it, what makes it my own. And I think a lot of people could take advantage of that, just what seeing what everybody else is doing and, and, and really paying attention. Mm, I love that. So clearly your mind is very organized. And when you came over, Not I was really. like, what's your sign? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you're like, let me make sure this is perfect. And you can tell us your sign. Yeah, I'm a Virgo. Yeah. So can you tell us how you got into astrology, how your girl told you about it, how you didn't believe in yeah. it before, and now you're checking yeah. everyone's sign? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for me, the whole Zodiac thing, I mean, one time my uh, my fiance was telling me, she was like, start reading this, this like, she started reading to me and I was just like, okay. And she was reading me about me. Like she was, te- she was, she was reading the Zodiac Virgo from this website. And I was just like, man, stop playing with me. You wrote that. It was so on point. I was just like, holy crap, like for real. So it made me dig deeper into it. And I was just like, there's no way. It was just like, whatever, man. Just because you're born a certain time of the year, it makes you this type of person. I was like, oh, whatever. But when she read that to me, I started digging deeper. So I was like, you know what? I started looking at a compatible signs for Virgo is Capricorns, Taurus, and Virgos. And I started calling all my friends. I never asked them their birthdays, anything. And I was like, oh, my bodyguard, he's a Virgo. Okay, dang. 
that was crazy. My mentor, oh shoot, Master P, he's a Taurus. And I started like, started doing all this math and start calculating. I was like, wow, like this is like some real stuff. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love seeing like more and more people who are super skeptical about astrology and all this stuff, yeah. like going into it more. And that's why I'm going to look up your entire birth chart and your yeah. human design once you know your birth time and mm-hmm. think that'll open up even more doors for you. Yeah. So thank you so much for all this incredible information. You really helped us learn and be your highest self as well. So where can listeners connect with you, listen to your podcast and come see you on the Millennium Tour? Hey, (laughs) yes. So my podcast is called A Spectacular Experience. We actually hit number one uh, in the app store for my podcast. So you guys could really check it out. I need you guys to just text me if you guys want to contact me, all right? Or you want to actually take my live training. You can actually go to 786-661-1224 and hashtag course. And it'll automatically send you a link to my free training for my Entrepreneur MBA program for my Hours R Academy, all right? And then if you guys want to contact me on social media, it's I Am Spectacular on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and then my LinkedIn. All you have to do is put in Spectacular Smith and it'll pop up. Mm, well, thank you so much for sharing. I'm so excited for the Millennium Tour. It's yes, Millennial Tour. I'm literally skipping Coachella to go. Uh, <laughs> Coachella ain't got nothing on the Millennial Tour. Nothing, yeah. yeah. Um, and thank you for the work that you're putting out into this world and for being just such an inspirational, motivational, and positive person. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me.